Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 7th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I believe today what is uh, certain is that uh, the U.S. has done a self-inflicted disqualification of being the sole arbitrator of this. And uh, I believe there is a lethal blow to the heart of the peace process because, again, Jerusalem is the heart uh, of it. And I believe today was a precious gift to the very extremist, the non-solutionist, the settler movement in the West Bank. It's not even to the Israelis because the majority of the Israelis, according to all polls, including recently, 85% are with a divorce are with the two-state solution on the 67 borders, including East Jerusalem. And therefore, today, those who are opening champagne are the ones who want to see Armageddon. That is the Palestinian representative to the uh, United Nations, I guess, or to the U.S., saying those responsible for Trump's decision want Armageddon. And again, I don't think many of you are hearing me. When he officially announced the move of the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, which will come in a few years, I did not question the validity of the position. I questioned the timing. And the only question I keep raising is why now? Why did he have to do this now? In a few seconds, joining us will be the great Ron Paul. And I say the great because he almost alone stood apart from all of the others as a libertarian when people didn't even know what the word libertarian meant. He was keeping the faith in Congress. And I used to get calls on every issue on this show, on the Savage Nation. The call screener would be bombarded with Ron Paul, Ron Paul, Ron, and then suddenly you forgot his name. Where are all you libertarians? Why did you suddenly disappear? Ron Paul's son, Rand Paul, a fine senator, was viciously attacked a few weeks ago, so we haven't heard much from him. But he was on this show about a month ago. He's one of the few senators that will come on the show because he's a man of integrity, as is his father. And I really don't know where Ron Paul stands on this issue because I haven't, ha I haven't spoken to him. I said, let's get him on. What's I not ironic, what's interesting to me, before I have Mr. Paul on, you know, I just wrote God, Faith, and Reason. It's in bookstores everywhere. It's still selling well. It's not become a national phenomenon. It's not in every magazine. But it's selling consistently, and it's well. It's good. God, Faith, and Reason. And now I'm enmeshed in this whole issue of the Jerusalem move, and you would think I would naturally be one of those cheerleaders of Donald Trump, where everything he does is correct, and everything he says is godly. But that's not who I am. I call him as I see him. I have for 24 years. And I will continue to call him as I see him. And this is a dumb move. It is imbecilic at this time. It will foster violence. And of all people to have done this, Donald Trump, whose campaign was built upon America first, this move is not for America. This is Israel first. That's my opinion. Dr. Ron Paul, what a pleasure to have you on the Savage Nation. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Michael. Nice to be with you. Well, I really don't know where you stand on Mr. Trump's decision to announce this now. Would you care to tell the world where you stand on this? <laughs> well, it's not something I would have done if I were in the, that position, but it might be for different reasons that other object. As a libertarian, I, I believe in non-intervention. The founders advised that stay out of the internal affairs of other nations. Don't become the policeman of the world. Even George Bush Jr. ran on a pretty good platform in the year 2000. Be a humble, have a humble person, uh, uh, per, uh, foreign policy, and this sort of thing. But I, I would just say that 
the United States doesn't shouldn't have this much power that they can wield it and sort of make the difference on where a capital is located. And uh, I think that this particular capital, we don't go around telling people, uh, you know, exactly where to put their capital. Sometimes we go around and tell people who their leaders should be, but we don't tell them where the capital. But this is a different story. This is more complicated, and it really lends itself to a libertarian approach. It's not so much that the libertarian has perfect knowledge about how to solve the problem of Jerusalem. I understand it's been that problem and debates have been going on for just a few years. So <laughs> take the position that we're not legally uh, in, uh, able to do that under our Constitution. And morally, we really don't have the authority that we can dictate to others. So it's very nice for me to take a position. We shouldn't be involved in this. Why go looking for trouble? Just because we give Israel a lot of money, does that mean uh, we should get involved and know exactly what the answer should be? So I think... Well, I, look, Mr. Paul, Dr. Paul, I... <laughs> I agree with you, but I'm a man alone right now. They think that because I identify as a conservative, I'm supposed to be a knee-jerk booster of everything the administration does. Again, I have to say what I said before you joined the show. Trump ran on the platform of America first. Everyone knows that. This is not an America first move. This is an Israel first move, isn't it? I think uh, if you want to talk about American first, I think it's exactly opposite of that. If you're American first, you try to keep America out of trouble. Uh, and if you're going to spend a lot of money and send troops around the world and tell people how to run their country, uh, that's putting them in the, ahead of yourself, ourselves. And I think it's, it's anti-American first. I think American first is to be minding our own business and extricating ourselves from many of these events. But uh, I think in your opening you said something. Is it, is it necessary at this particular time, even though your position might be slightly different than mine, timing is important. And right now this whole argument that uh, uh, it won't uh, affect uh, the deliberations uh, uh, for peace and it won't endanger us and uh, and uh, this this whole thing i i think there's a lot of downside to this and already we see the ramifications and you know uh mattis and uh his other and, and uh, trump's other advisor said don't do it this is bad so he, he went and did it anyway but uh it, it it is on the books it's perfectly legal I don't mm -hmm. consider it moral or wise, but, you know, they passed the law in 1995. The authority's yep. there. At least they went to the Congress. The Congress said, yes, we should change the thing. But all the presidents up until now thought it would be unwise to go ahead and do it. Well, that's why his supporters think it's so great, because they're saying he's a man of courage and a man of his word. But that's not my point. My point is not if, but why now? And the answer, I'm afraid, is quite Machiavellian. And I don't like the timing at all. Now, the king of Jordan, a very moderate uh, Muslim king, opposed it. The king of Saudi Arabia, who just purged his nation of those oriented toward Islamism, opposed it. Why would we not listen to people who are the kings of nations adjacent to Israel, is what I'm asking here. And, and, and Mr. Paul, Dr. Paul, we also have to ask, who pushed this now? Trump didn't do this on his own. So who are the motivators? Well, we don't know. We understand, for example, by what we read, and we don't know how much of it is true, that Sheldon Adelson, the billionaire gambling magnate from Las Vegas, is one of the prime movers of this. Now, I have no idea why he would want this done. Uh, I can't even understand what, 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 what interest it is of his. And then, of course, there's arguments that Jared Kushner, the ambassador to the universe, uh, was behind it, and we know how wise he is and what his background and experience in diplomatic relations is. And so, therefore, maybe the wise men know something I don't know. Politically, what bothers me uh, is the fact that it's bipartisan, strongly bipartisan. The leadership of both parties do agree on issues like this, even though they... Yep and fume over the budget on the big issues, whether it's the Federal Reserve, whether it's foreign policy or an issue like this, they're very much in agreement. But, you know, I saw one poll that showed that although leadership in the Republican, especially the Democrat Party, they both agree with this, that when they did a grassroots campaign, I think they said that somebody reported, whether it's true or not, 81% of grassroots Democrats don't, like it, don't think it's a very good idea uh, to do this. So, uh, yeah, but what percent of Republicans support this? Probably 90 percent. Pardon me? Probably 90 percent of Republican voters support Donald Trump on this. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I don't know what it is, but I don't care. I think it's wrong. In other words, my job is not to go along with what people think I'm supposed to say. 
but to say what I think is correct, Dr. Paul, you are a surgeon. Am I correct by training? I'm an OB surgeon, gynecologist. And the reason I ask is quite simple. When you were in that, in that surgical theater, when you were in that operating room, when you had to make a split decision, you based it upon your observations of the patient on the table, not upon a textbook. Isn't that correct? That is absolutely the case, and you do that from day one of becoming a physician if you want to be a decent physician, that whether it's an examining room or talking on the telephone or anything, you, all your decisions have to be based on the same principle. Well, I'm a man of science, and I'm looking at this very objectively, not emotionally, although I sound emotional at times. Uh, I'm quite objective when it comes to these things, and I believe this is one of the greatest blunders of the presidency so far, and I can summarize it in one simple statement, which I'll say again. And then we'll move on to North Korea, if you don't mind, which is this is not an America first decision. This is an Israel first decision. And that says it all for me, because Donald Trump ran on an America first platform, somewhat of a semi isolationist. Now, all of a sudden, we wake up and he's almost like a classic George Bush type Republican meddling in foreign affairs in places we don't even have to be. Yeah, and look at the, the suffering that has occurred since 9-11, all the wars we've been involved in, how many liberties have we sacrificed in, in this country, what the financial situation has become. Uh, a lot of changes have occurred, and, and for a libertarian, it's not complicated. We ought to just defend the principles of liberty. We ought to defend the Constitution, which doesn't give us authority to do almost everything the Congress does. You know, the printing of money and the earning up of the deficits and, and listening to the military industrial complex, the medical industrial complex, the whole works is so mm. contrary to mm. a government that we were given that was supposed to be designed to protect liberty. And that's probably way down on the list of most people. <laughs> Dr. Paul, I, I'm listening and I'm enjoying, you're like music to my ears. On Monday on this program, I talked about what is a fiscal conservative. I had to remind the audience that that once mattered. Then I said, what do you mean, printing b money is suddenly conservative? Do you know that I was roundly attacked by the Trump bots on the social media because I suddenly was talking about the fact that the budget is blown up out of proportion, the money is being printed faster than under Obama, and moreover that the so-called tax overhaul actually increases the taxes of business owners in some states. It doesn't decrease it. You should see the hatred that I received for talking about balancing the budget. Yeah, but you'd wonder whether you were doing the right thing if you never got a complaint. You know, <laughs> then you'd wonder, hey, what's happening here? Have I <laughs> my way? Well, Doctor Paul, can you stay with us a minute because we're going to go through some commercial messages in a moment, and then I'd like to hear your opinions on North Korea. I know that's a big topic that's been forgotten. While only two weeks ago we were on the verge of nuclear war, where'd that go to? Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five. 407282 Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800 289 2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. You know, not everything is fake news. I mean, there is a fire that's raging out of control in Los Angeles. I have a home down there. Luckily, I'm not in it right now. It was only a few miles away from my neighborhood. I, I, my, my family had to have dogs removed from a house and taken to another part of L.A. Is that fake news because it's on CNN, pictures of the flames? Uh, did they fake that? Well, I don't think so. And then on the CNN, it says violent protests follow Trump's Jerusalem decision. And they show Arabs going crazy in Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. Is that fake news as well? I mean, wake up to reality. There is reality, and there are consequences to decisions by presidents of the United States. And Trump's decision put the Middle East on knife's edge. It absolutely was a blunder. I don't care if you tell me he promised he would do it. He promised a lot of things. He said he'd build a wall. Did he build a wall? No, didn't build a wall. He said he'd give me tax relief. Did he? No, he raised my taxes. So don't tell me everything that he says he's supposed to follow through on. Let him build a wall better than worry about Israel. I'd rather see a wall built with the Mexican border than worry about moving the embassy to Jerusalem, which has no bearing whatsoever on an American's life. None. He ran as an America first candidate, not an, not an Israel first candidate. We're speaking with the great congressman, Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, welcome back to the Savage Nation. What do you think about the North Korea situation? How did it go from hot to cold? On the what? The... 
the, the North Korea. Right. How did we go? We, we were on the brink of nuclear war two weeks ago. Now we don't hear about it. Well, maybe the first story wasn't uh, legitimate. You know, I think it was hype. I think it was built up. They didn't show the picture of what Korea looks like at nighttime because there are no lights on. They can't even turn lights on. They can't feed their people. And they're a third world nation. And those missiles going off are less than what they're, they're, they're said to be. That last one, which was supposed to be the super missile that would reach us, really exploded in midair as it came down and couldn't reenter the atmosphere. So it is hype. I think we get lied into wars all the time. But Korea has been on my mind for a long time. It started when I was in high school when one of my teachers was drafted after having been in World War II, and he was sent to Korea, and we never saw him again. He was killed over there. And then as time went on, I started to understand it was a war that we didn't even declare. It wasn't a legitimate war. It was, it was designed by the United Nations, which annoyed me a lot. And then when, then when I was drafted during the Cold War, uh, during the uh, Vietnam War, uh, that was a total disaster. We lost that completely. And we went home, uh, we came home, and then what happened? We, we ended up doing better with Vietnam. We trade with them, talk with them, travel with them. A tremendous improvement. But we stayed in Korea spending trillions of dollars. And where are we? Back where I was in high school, fighting, still fighting and looking for another fight. And it seems like we just won't allow them to, uh, you know, talk to the South Koreans. The South Koreans are anxious to talk to the North Koreans, but we inhibit this. So once again, the answer to this is get out. And I've taken that position. I never voted for a nickel to keep the troops in Korea. We just need to come home. We would be better off, and we wouldn't be over there antagonizing people and looking for a war with either China or North Korea or whoever. It's just unnecessary. <laughs> Great floor speech. Do you miss the Congress? Do you miss being in Congress? No, not really, because I do have chances. To, I, I went to Congress uh, by almost accident. I spoke out in the 70s due to the monetary system, what was going on, and uh, mm. I never really thought I'd go to Washington. I stayed a little while, then I went back home and did more medicine. Then, then I went back, but I was there always to do exactly what I'm doing right now, trying to talk about the issues, because I, I never expected anybody to listen or pay attention to anything I did. I was... <laughs> and delighted that a few people did listen and the presidential campaign seemed to be worthwhile. So I, I have to say to you, I'm sorry, we have 30 seconds left, but first of all, look, our prayers and blessings go out to your son who was so viciously attacked by his neighbor. Uh, we don't know. I hope he's better and gets better. And I would like to offer you a copy of my current book, God, Faith, and Reason. I would love to send that to you. And I really appreciate your opinions both on the Jerusalem issue and the North Korea issue. I think you understand the pressures we are under here with regard to time on the radio. And I want to say thank you very much. I hope you'll come back to join us on the Savage Nation. Dr. Ron Paul. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. We are back on the Savage Nation. It's 34 minutes after the hour across the world. The world reacts to Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as an Israeli capital. We've been talking about that. We are talking about, uh, well, other things. I spoke with ex-congressman and Dr. Ron Paul. What's interesting to me is that he expressed a purely libertarian viewpoint on the Middle East, which matches my own. It's amazing to me how far we have become removed in radio from Ron Paul's viewpoint. There was a time that Ron Paul's libertarian views were quite popular in talk radio. Do you know that? But with the new climate in the political world, you never hear the libertarian viewpoint anymore. People don't even self-identify with the word libertarian anymore. I used to get calls all the time. Hi, I'm not a conservative. I'm a libertarian. I'd listen to them. I haven't had a call like that in a year, more than a year. No more. I never hear libertarian. I used to get loads of calls on that issue. So I, I love the interview with Mr. Paul. I never spoke with him before, and I, I felt as though I were the friendly guy I knew. I just felt like I liked him and I knew him. Reminds me of a couple of doctors and actually one particular doctor I was very friendly with for many years and um, just a purely rational intelligent mind
gone gone with the wind out of politics. So that's where we are today. Okay, what do you want to talk about? We can move on. There are other topics, I guess. I'm not that interested in, in anything else. We could talk about sensitivity, how sensitive do you want to be. We could talk about does God exist, what is the nature of God, what is the nature of man, all in my book, God, Faith, and Reason. I don't know if I want to do that right now. I should. I should bang your head over a little bit about the book, and I won't, but I'm going to read you the opening line just to show you that it's not a proselytizing manuscript. Here's what I wrote. If you think I'm just a preacher, you're wrong. I never saw God, nor do I pretend to have any special insights. What you will see in this book, God, Faith, and Reason, are snapshots of God, not a complete film. This book is presented in an omnibus style and does not have to be read in precise sequential order. What you will see is one man's glimpses of God, images along the road of life. I do not represent myself as a theologian or a guru. There are no cheap thrills here for the spiritually bankrupt masses. It is my scrapbook of the highest power through dreams, memories, and stories, much like the ancient texts. I like the opening to my book because it's true. And that's the end of it. And we'll see what happens. There's one thing in the book that I meant to mention. I, I don't want to stick to it for now. I'm not, not, I, I shouldn't, shouldn't. There's a piece with a, a four-year-old girl's view of God that I haven't read yet. Maybe I should do that now. My attorney, Dan Horowitz, has two young children. And he once told me what his little girl had to say about God. I hope he's listening uh, because I know that the his son who was recovering from surgery, little Isaac, said that when he read this to him, <laughs> He saw a sister was mentioned in the book, but he wasn't. So he said, Daddy, Daddy, could you have Michael write me in, in his next book? <laughs> uh, where is this thing about the child's a four-year-old's view of God? Here, a four-year-old's view of God, page 45. I'm going to read your paragraph or two just to give you a flavor, see what you should get for the Christmas holidays. My friend Daniel has two lovely children. His little daughter, Chloe, is four years old. He said that she wanted to learn about Hanukkah, so he bought her a book on it for Christmas. She asked him to read it to her. He got in the part where the Greeks took over the temple, and she asked, Daddy, what is a temple? Daniel said, it was a Jewish White House. <laughs> in those days, religion and politics were the same. Then the questions from that precocious four-year-old resumed. She asked, why does God want us to have a temple? He said, I don't know, but that is where people go to talk to God. She asked, what do they say to him? Well, they say a lot of things. They thank God for making everything. She asked, why did he make everything? He said, I don't know, but we are here and we're trying to explain why. Well, what did he make us out of? He then said, well, people believe that God made us from nothing. She asked, but why did he do that? Dan says, there are many views on that. Well, who made him? Well, that's the big question, he said. If there was nothing, then who made God? A bigger God? Also, if God could do anything, can he make a car that everyone else can drive but he can't? <clears throat> she said, I know, Daddy, it doesn't make sense. What do you think? He told her, I think that you will have to decide for yourself and pick answers that are best for you. He then showed her the Ten Commandments, which are in the book, and he told her, here's the good part. Honor your mother and father. The little girl smiled. And then he read, <laughs> then he read the part. This is good. Then he read the part that said, thou shalt not murder. Chloe said, but you can protect yourself. He said, yes, just not murder someone. Murder is killing without defending someone. Murder is killing without defending someone, she asked. But people are doing that already. She then asked, how do we know that God really gave us the Ten Commandments? How do we know this? He said, it's what people believe based upon what is in the book. Dan then tried to put Judaism together with his wife Val's Episcopalian background, and he said, the Ten Commandments is a part of both of our religions. It is God's instructions to the Jews. The child then asked, but what about Jesus, Daddy? Was he God? Dan said, the Jews see him as a Jew. He followed Jewish law, and he was really, really smart. If he was God as a person or a Jew who was really smart and kind, it doesn't matter. Both are good. But, Dad, why would God be a person? What does God really look like? Dan said, I think God could be a boy or girl or anything God wants. Well, how was he born if he was God? Dan said he was born as a Jew, that is for sure. The Christians believe that wise people knew of his birth, and he was very special right from the beginning. So we both agree that he was special, but the Christians believe he was special because he was God on earth. Chloe then asked, oh, it's almost over. Chloe then asked, 
Uh, but why would God want people to see a baby born? How did they know to come to see him? Daniel said, I don't know. That's what they believe. That somehow they knew. Chloe said, that doesn't make sense to me. Why would God want people to visit a baby? I want to see this in a book. Did anybody write about this? Dan says, oh, no, I write this. Then you could see where this is going. The fact of the matter is that children are more rational than adults in many ways, and they want strictly rational answers to questions for which there are no answers. That's what makes them so insightful. This is the essence of faith. Faith is the ability of a human being to believe in something for which there is no proof. Fundamentally, that's the whole point of this book. To believe in God, you must have faith. There is no proof that God exists. And if that's not worth your reading, I don't know what is, because I gave you everything I could possibly give you about God in God, faith, and reason. I'm just one man alone, not claiming any special insights or special wisdom. Just a lot of surus and a lot of searching, a lot of dreaming, and a lot of hoping. Where are we in time? It is 41 minutes after the hour. I've lost my train of thought because I went into another train of thought, which is the eternal train of thought, which takes me away from the temporal train of thought. But I know you only want to have the temporal train of thought. So let's go back to some temporal strains of thought. And I'm not going to do this again with the move of the embassy. I gave you my position. I wrote about it on michaelsavage.com. Uh, already the war, that machine is uh, stirring it up already. L.A. is burning. Beverly Hills of hell. Uh, $30 million houses have gone up in smoke, 82 square miles on fire. This is only a few months after the fires in Napa and Sonoma. You have to ask yourself, what the heck is going on with these fires? Where are they coming from? Are they man-caused? Are these homeless people encampments in the woods? Or is it terrorism, or is it pure chance? We don't know. But you're not going to read about that. You're only going to read about the fires because they're dramatically horrible. Phone number is 855-400-7282. That's the phone number. We can talk about any of the topics I raised or any topic that you wish to talk about. Let's go to Kathy on WABC in New York. Kathy, let's bring us back down to the politics of the day. What's on your mind? Oh, Dr. Savage, thank you. And uh, I could not stop thinking about this. God saves and for no reason whatsoever <laughs> in terms of what Trump is doing now. I, I just think it's... Uh, you're, you're a little unfocused. I think you're in a restaurant somewhere in Manhattan. So kind of take the phone outside in the vestibule. What are you calling about? I'm calling about the fact that I agree with you, that this is a terrible decision. It's horrific. And what, are you ha what are you having for lunch? Are you with friends? I'm with good friends. We're in an Italian restaurant. I know it. I know. Look, I can hear. I can hear. Fun. When I hear a voice already, it's a little. How many glasses of wine did you have already? Yes. Yes, at least at, at least two. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, look, it's holiday time. Only people. Only people who, who don't have the time are not in restaurants right now, enjoying themselves. The fact of the matter is, it's not a bad thing to do on an afternoon. But how are you getting out in the afternoon to having a glass of wine with your friends? Don't you work? I'm go. We all work. And we're self-employed, hardworking, and we're kibitzing. You're kibitzing, and uh, you're eating Italian food while you're kibitzing. All right, but you called to say what on the Jerusalem thing? You agree that I'm right, or you agree that I'm wrong? I agree that you're right already. You're totally right. This is purely about money and about power. And but what do you? What do your friends at the dinner table think? Do you discuss politics with them? Yes, and they agree and with me because I'm very good. But let me ask you this: Were you all Trump voters? Yes and no. Already, yes and no. Right. Is it mainly? Are they mainly Italian women? No, they're Irish. Irish, Italian, and Jewish. So, okay, let's start with the Jewish. Who did they vote for? They voted for Trump. They okay. In the class. And who did who did the, who did the Irish women vote for? Trump, but they were never admitted. So wait, so who voted against Trump? Who voted against Trump? Yeah. 
Was it your Italian friends? So you, we broke it down now. The Jewish voted for Trump. The uh, Irish voted for Trump. So who voted against them? But this is at my table. Nobody. Oh. Yeah, All right, look, go back to your vino because we're not making any sense right now. You're having a better time than I am. Uh, but I appreciate the sentiment. Thanks for calling from somewhere in the ethers of New York City. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> you know, I took the day off yesterday. I had a little bit of a dental thing, not no biggie. But I had the whole day to myself. It was an expansive, beautiful time to be alone and think. And I meditated on where I'm at with regard to uh, my career, where I'm with regard to people not understanding where I'm coming from. Not for the first time in my career, perhaps not the last, but I cannot believe the hatred that I have encountered on Twitter and Facebook. It is the home of cyberbullying. Luckily, I'm very strong, and I dismiss these idiots, and I know a lot of it is written by people hired by my competitors in the media on the various web names. And I understand that there's a lot of jealousy and evil in the world, but nevertheless, I've never encountered such hatred in my entire career than I have now in simply saying it is idiotic for Trump to have done this at this time. Are you people not even able to listen to an alternate viewpoint? When I say to you it's about the timing and it's questionable as to why he chose to do this Jerusalem speech now, Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Happy holidays from the IRS. You're next. The IRS collection agents know, agencies, they know that companies give out bonuses this time of year. You think they're stupid? And they're coming after yours. Look, it's your choice. Explain to your family that the IRS garnished your wages and seized your bank accounts. Go ahead. Or take your holidays back. Because that's what happens when you call the number one tax resolution firm, Optima Tax Relief. Optima knows that behind every tax problem are good, decent people. People with families, homes, savings, and paychecks. They need protection. They need it now. No one knows the IRS ins and outs better than Optima, which explains how they've resolved over a half a billion dollars in tax debt for their clients and why they are A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Taking your and your family's holidays back, it's simple. It starts the minute you call Optima Tax Relief. Write the number down. You may need it. 800-731-2474. 800-731-2474. Write it down again. 800-731-2474. Richard on WABC, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. I don't answer how I am because we hear me, know sir. each other. My health has nothing to do with the question. What's on your mind? All right, so... um when we talk All right, thanks for the call. That, it's like a clock. I have an egg timer in my head. He made one fatal error by asking me how I am. A rule of my show is never ask me how I am. This is not a personal phone call. You do not know me, number one. Number two, my grandmother, who was from Russia, when someone would ask her how you are, she'd say, how should I be? Because she was leery of everyone asking, what's your business, how I am? What do you mean, how I am? I know it's a colloquialism, I know it. But I don't engage in it because it makes for very boring radio. Sorry, my friend. But it would have been nice to hear from you. Uh, Baruch on line eight. Fire away. You got a minute to go. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. First of all, Ron Paul was very dishonest by saying that the libertarian view is that Israel is Israel should that should it should be in, in Tel Aviv, the capital, because the libertarian view is that. Whoever holds the reins of power in a country, you don't get involved. That's what it is. That's the status quo. And the ones who hold the reins are the Israelis. And if they say it's in Jerusalem, it's in Jerusalem. Oh, wait, well, that's all well and good. Then what are we sticking our noses into Jerusalem for? We said, and what are we sticking our nose in and rejecting what they claim to be the 
Who no, are no, we to you, tell them? No, you, wait, wait, sir, we're not telling them anything. But why did Trump choose to reaffirm the Israeli point of view with regard to Jerusalem now? That's the issue. I, actually, it was a brilliant move that he didn't know, because he was back in a corner with all this Mueller stuff. No one's perfect. Of course, there's... Oh, oh, so you're agreeing with me that it's a distraction from the Mueller investigation. It's not a distraction. So, it's, 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 in other words, it's a wag-the-dog scenario along the lines of Bill Clinton with Monica Lewinsky attacking uh, Gaddafi. So you're confirming what I said. So, in other words, he's actually using Israel for his own political advantage. Thank you for confirming that. I appreciate it. God, faith, and reason awaits you in the stores. If you want wisdom, go buy it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 7th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation, and we're going to talk about all the topics that are plaguing you. As the Romans used to say, we're not interested in where the Roman legions are, whether they're in Germania or elsewhere, or Britannia. We're not interested. We're only interested in the pebble in the shoe, which means what actually affects you. And so if I raise the issue of why would Trump right now talk about Jerusalem, and it's the right thing to do. What does that have to do with you? Why does that affect you on a daily basis? Didn't we af didn't we disagree with um, Obama when he kept meddling in foreign affairs? Didn't we say that we'd rather he focus on domestic American affairs? Moreover, didn't we vote for Trump because he said he was an America first nationalist? Why would he sign such a proclamation at this time when it has nothing to do with America first? It has to do with Israel first. Which is a separate question, which is of no interest to me right now, which is whether or not the capital of Israel is Jerusalem or belongs in Jerusalem. It's not my problem. It's their problem. Don't they have problems enough that they have to antagonize the Muslims even further? I don't know whether you understand this, but there are one billion Muslims on the earth and scarcely 10 million Jews, I think, the last I checked say, well, what does it have to do with anything? Isn't there such a thing as right from wrong? Of course there is. Of course we're on the side of Israel's survival. That's a given. I passed my loyalty oath, I hope. I, I, I hope you understand that I passed the litmus test. But that's not the issue. The issue is why would he do this now? And the answer is, it makes no sense at all unless it's a Machiavellian cover-up job. And that's the end of that story. So, that's the story. Then we're talking about Frankenwein. Frankenwein, which will be copied like every other thing that I've said over the years. Uh, many years ago, I used the phrase, uh, who knows, many of my phrases get picked up. People think they're so clever, they use them over and over like they invented them. They could stop using them after five years, maybe. I use it once, I throw it away. They use five years, they use the same thing. Whether it be a show opening or a uh, huff and puff post. I mean, Jesus, move on already. You know, come up with something original every once in a while. So what do you want to talk about? Frankenwine? That'll catch. Neocons pushing Jerusalem issue for war profiteering? Timing is everything. Ask yourself, why are they doing this now? Oh, wait a minute. Here's something I want to get to. Class action lawsuits. One of my favorite hobbies is waiting for the day that class action lawyers are taken out in handcuffs, arrested for racketeering, and all their assets seized unto the third generation, whether it's in their grandmother's account in Boca Raton or in their daughter's account at the Brown University Savings Bank. If it was up to me, every class action lawyer in America would be immediately arrested, their assets seized no matter where they're hidden, and class action law immediately eliminated. 
It's gangsterism with a law degree. So there's a uh, law site I go to, which I've called Class Action Law Watch. And here's some of the headlines from it. Opioid suits are the new tobacco litigation, attorney says. The litigation coming out of the opioid crisis will rival the tobacco suits of the 1990s. Jay Adelson of plaintiffs from Adelson PC told an audience during a Chicago City Club panel on the drugs and possible solutions to the epidemic of addiction. So to a lawyer, the solution to everything is destroy somebody and put them in jail. Isn't that nice? That's always the solution. Don't go after the drug dealers. Be the cowards that you are and go after someone else. Don't go after the drug dealers. Go after someone and try to bankrupt them. That's the lawyer's way. Seventh Circuit Court wary of reviving Barnes & Noble breach action. PayPal investor sues over likely breach that tanks stocks. Uh, Ex-NFLers can't stop changes to concussion claims process. Airline agrees to $1.9 million deal in flight attendant wage row. You know, that's the latest scam going on with the class action lawyers across America, which is they sue every company in the United States of America for improper wage payments. That's the newest game in town. Let's say you get an illegal alien from Mexico, and he's glad to have the job, and he works at a job for three minutes or three days. Well, within those three days, he finds a shyster with a law degree, and he claims disability, goes out and collects uh, some disability payments. Then he sues the employer for non-payment of wages, uh, not paying him fairly. And you wonder why the country and the state is bankrupt? Stop the class action lawyers. Arrest them all. Seize their assets. Not going to happen because they own the government. Make no mistake about it, the um, American Bar Association owns the government. Has Trump talked about tort reform? Put an X through that one. Maybe America first, but it's not on the issues that matter in some ways. Remember I used to complain about Bush? How come he didn't go after the lawyers, rein in the ABA? Because they run the country, the American Bar Association. Something I thought I'd share with you. If you'd like to talk about some class action lawsuit horror stories, such as a piece of garbage with a law degree who sucked you into a class action lawsuit and gave you five cents and took $50 million, go ahead, make our day. Call 855-407-282. Because I'm sick and tired of American corporations being destroyed by these parasites and leeches. Parasites and leeches. The same scum that bring false charges against public figures to bring them down on perhaps false molestation claims are the same scum mentality that destroy businesses without creating a product or a service. After all, these lawyers produce no products. They produce no services. They are just like the classic vulture or parasite that lives off others. They are leeches and they must be stopped. Made new friends just now, got to tell you that. That's what I do every day in the Savage Nation, making new friends day by day. New friends day by day on the Savage Nation. So let's go to some of the callers on the issue of Jerusalem. We had Ron Paul on in the last hour. I, I love the interview, incidentally. And I, I think that we need to entertain the audience a little bit. Maybe it's too heavy for, uh, uh, what afternoon is this? Thursday, wow. You know what I keep in my broadcast desk now? Just a little side note. It's a new, I have some toys. And one of to I know, I'm not supposed to have toys. I have toys. I have toys. Two of the toys I have are little models of Volkswagen six-window or eight-window vans with surfboards on them with little paintings that are like love and peace, like hippie, hippie wagons, love and peace with like peace signs on them. The old VWs from the 60s, I have two of them on my desk. You know why? It reminds me of another place and another time that I never existed in. I never really had that period in my life, but I... I mean, I've lived on beaches, but I was always working too hard. I've never arrested in my whole life. I'm not complaining. I'm not Frank and wine. But I dream of a time and a place where I, too, can kick back, get into a Volkswagen van with a surfboard on the roof, and just hang out. It hasn't happened yet. Maybe it will one day. And so here we are dealing with the world's problems. Let's go to the call of Samantha on KSFO Line 4. Go ahead, please. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I agree with you. This is not the time to be moving the embassy, if at all. Now, are you a person who normally disagrees with me? No, actually I don't. I find myself shocked that I agree with you a lot. <laughs> That's a loaded statement. <laughs> why, why shocked? 
Well, because I used to consider myself pretty lefty liberal until I started listening to you. Oh, God. I'm Look, I'm not going to apologize, but I've, I've, I've uh, changed another person's life. That's terrible. So you lost all your friends? No, not at all. I mean, I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. It's kind of hard not to lean left. Yeah, but that's it's sort of group thinking. Aren't they tired of thinking alike and sounding alike and not disagreeing with with each other? Doesn't that get tiring? It does. I, so I think people are shocked to know that I do listen to you. I try to tell my my family friends that listen to the Fox News and the crazy heads over there to listen to you because you're you know much way much more intelligent. Well, I, that's appreciated, of course. I wouldn't say way more intelligent. They have to do their job in the way they are told to do it and what they can say and what, what they cannot say. Some of them are very intelligent, but they're limited in where they can go. I have uh, the ability of free thinking and uh, free thought, so that's the difference, I think, in this regard. But um, I guess you want a copy of my book, so you have to tell me the title, and then you'll get one. What's it called? I bought it. I, I was an early buyer. I bought it on Amazon. Oh, my God, I'm embarrassed. I take that back. That is really embarrassing, what I just said. It's embarrassing for me. <laughs> I'm tired right now. I just like a wave of fatigue hit me. Do you know that, Samantha? It's like well, hour three. No, it's hour three. I could fake it like all the others in the media make believe. We have so much material we can hardly keep up with it. Why my stack is so high? I doubt very much. No, I, I don't want to do that. I'm a little tired right now. I got hit with a wave. So I, I, I made a mistake in saying that you probably want a book. But I'm going to send you one anyway to give to one of your Libby uh, relatives. Would they take it? So I pre-ordered it. And I, I have an idea. Why don't you take the free copy of God, Faith, and Reason and take my picture off it and put a picture of Obama on the top of it. Paste the picture of an Obama. Run an experiment. What if you took God, Faith, and Reason and superimposed the picture of Obama's face on it and took my name off it and put Obama's on it? I bet, it would, I bet they would love the book. And then if they read it, they would think it was very smart and very wise. Yeah. It probably All right. Thanks for calling. Clint, get her name. Clint's in today. Clint looks like a Viking. He got a new haircut. It was fun. You know, I, my whole show is virtual. I'm here in San Francisco. The show is produced out of Dallas, Texas. And I never meet the guy. I never met them in person. And since I'm a germaphobe, this is perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. I can't even accidentally touch one of their cups or, or use the microphone that they touch. This is a perfect profession for a germaphobic individual. But uh, today, Clint uh, is filling in, and he's on the phone, and he's a big Viking-looking guy on the calls. Clint, watch out. You're going to get a lot of dates if I keep this up. <clears throat> he's been, he tells me during the breaks what people are saying. He's got to deal with it today. Normally, Jim does that. Jim's on the on the uh, control board <laughs> right now. He's saying they're calling like crazy on this Jerusalem thing, and you can't believe what they're saying, which is uh, God determined it and this and that. And Oh, God, he has to put up with that. Clint, are you a religious guy yourself? Are you a fundamentalist Christian? Yes? I think he is. I think he's from... Yes, he's saying... Are you giving me the middle finger or saying yes? I couldn't tell. He looks like one of the characters in Vikings. No, he's a good guy. And because I was watching the show Vikings again last night, he reminds me of one of the characters. He should think of getting a, a, an acting job in, in, in that show. How did that country... How did Norway go from the Vikings to the Schmikings in, in just a few generations? How they go from the Vikings to the Lemmings, where they let their women be raped, mauled, and they do nothing about it. How did the Scandinavian nations collapse? What happened there? Where's the Viking blood? It's like drained out of them. Well, anyway, just a random thought. So uh, what are they saying, uh, Clint? You want to come on the air? Let Clint have a minute. Jim, would you be jealous if Clint comes on for a minute? Clint, hit the live mic and tell us what they're saying behind the scenes on, about this Jerusalem thing. Huh? Can he do that? I don't yes, know if sir. he can do it. What are they actually saying to you? I can't hear The it. ones you don't let on the air. Oh, Samantha's just telling me how much more attractive I am than Robert on the phone. That, that was basically oh, that, No, not about you. What are they saying about the issue? Oh, well, they're all mad at you, and, and the Bible says that Jerusalem is supposed to be the capital. And all right, because well, the fine. I'm glad the, Bible, I'm glad the Bible says it. But the question is, why does America have to stick their nose into the Bible right now? Why this time? Why now? Why at this time? Because obviously he can solve a lifelong conflict between Jews and Muslims. Ah, I see. They're going to suddenly do the horror together in the Middle East. 
Did you think? Because Donald, because Donald Trump sided with Israel, suddenly the Muslims are going to see the light and they're all going to get along. And they're going to break PETA together and share a nice hummus. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what the Bible also says? There shall never be peace between uh, the two brothers. Isn't that what the Bible says? That shall never shall be peace between the two brothers? I believe so. And who were the two brothers? Ever since Abel, Cain and Abel came along, there never has been, there never will be peace in the Middle East. And unless we know that, we know nothing. This is the Savage Nation back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Savage is a man alone, but has survived. You can keep your head when all those around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Then you will be a man, my son. I actually read poetry and use it my whole life to keep me going. So it'll keep me going through all of this disaster of mass hysteria. What we're witnessing is a mass hysteria where Trump can do no right amongst the liberals and he can do no wrong amongst the Trump voters. What's, what's, what's heartbreaking to me is how foolish the Trump voters are to not understand that those who stabbed him in the back for a year straight while I was here alone for him are now licking his boots for their own advantage. And they don't see through it. It's unbelievable to me. But that's for you to figure out, not me. So this is a big, big mistake that he made. It's a terrible, terrible blow to the peace process. So you'll say, well, what peace process? So what, you want war now, war process? So in other words, more antagonism is better than no antagonism? There was a sort of standoff in the Middle East. That's what went on. The power balance had shifted. Suddenly, Saudi Arabia was with Israel in lockstep. There was a power balance shift. And all of a sudden now, what, what is this for? What do they need? Another war in the Middle East? Is that what they need? They don't have enough money coming into the Defense Department and the contractors? They don't have enough? When you see Lindsey Graham and John... The strange one, McCain, cheering Trump's move, you know something's wrong. You know that there's something in it for them. So that's that decision. Look who supports the embassy decision, warmongers. Government, beware the military-industrial complex. If you can keep your head when all others around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, then you will be a man, my son. Who wrote that poem? Not Lindsey Graham, not John McCain. A great poet wrote that. It was called If by Rudyard Kipling. I read it on the air 20 years ago. Maybe I should read it when I come back. I read it to my children, both boy child and girl child, if. Because it's all about sticking to your guns and sticking to your principles. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. And I don't know if I Great song. Welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. I know there's so many thoughts going through my mind at once. Let me start with the most mundane. Many of you saw me on Twitter, on Periscope, with my hat, the Savage Nation. For years, you've asked me to provide them. I don't really sell anything on my site. Okay, so we're going to sell them to you, and they're available for order now for pre-order on michaelsavage.com. I'm going to caution you, though. They're going to take eight weeks to get to you. Maybe eight weeks, maybe more. So you're not getting it for Christmas. But I'm going to caution you about another thing. I'm only making a thousand of them. If we get a thousand orders in the next few weeks, I'll make you know five thousand. But I'm not making a lot of them. Savage Haitian, Savage Haitian, Savage Haitian Nation. I sounded like Trump now. I said have a sh Savage <laughs> Nation hats now available for pre-order on michaelsavage.com. Eight weeks to get, so it's up there now. That's number one. Let's see what else I wanted. So I was talking to. Uh, to uh to clint during the break because clint fills in but he's not there all the time he's a different kind of you know younger guy i said clint you're in texas you both guys are, are there in dallas i said clint are you a religious guy or were you raised that way he said both as a christian so i said where do you fall on this jerusalem issue he said i agree with you 100 percent so i said well what kind of calls are you getting he said michael he said i've never seen such anger and hatred i said why 
He said, well, the Christians are saying because unless Jerusalem is made the capital of Israel now, what what'd you say? The, what can't happen again? I, I don't know the exact wording. The, Jesus can't return? The end of time. They, they want, so the end of times. And the Muslims believe that you have to have Armageddon for the, what, the 12th Mahdi to appear or return? The 12th Imam Mahdi. So in other words, that's great. So then if that did happen, and there was Armageddon, uh, and uh, Jesus returned and the Mahdi returned, then they'd be fight over something else. So then they would argue over something. I mean, it's crazy. I, I don't understand this this thinking. I'm a pure rationalist at a certain point, as spiritual as I can be, and as mystical as I can get sometime, or quite mashuga, as we say in my foreign language. I can also be so rational that it's frightening. My mind is like a magnifying glass sometimes. And I see right through this embassy move. It has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with Machiavellian politics, period, end of story. But if you want to buy it, take it hook, line, and sinker. Go ahead, make my day. That's all. That's what talk radio is about, which is uh, discussing ideas. I don't mind you disagreeing with me at all. But I don't like the hatred that I'm seeing on Twitter and Facebook. I'm talking about pure, unadulterated hatred. Never saw anything like it. And it's coming mainly from other talk show hosts who hire legions of front men under different names in order to file these things. And I want to caution them. I know who you are. I know who is doing it. I know who the front people are. If it does not stop, things will be released that you will not be very happy with about houses, about apartments, about medications, about drug use. Trust me, I may be smaller than the cartel is, but I'm still here. You get the picture? The cartel will be exposed. What they share with each other will be exposed. And it goes all the way up the chain to television stations. It's not just limited to radio. Trust me, this will happen if this keeps up. And also, I may just drop my Twitter and Facebook accounts. You know, I lived for 20, 23 years of radio without Facebook and Twitter accounts. Would you believe? How did I survive without an iPhone? How did I survive all these years without a Facebook or Twitter account? It's strange I did. I built a radio show without it. I could just drop it tomorrow. I don't need it. If you're just going to use it as a forum for hatred, I'm dropping it. I don't need it. That's so it's that simple. I don't, what do I need it for? I'm going to read what idiots have to say sitting in a pair of pajamas on medication somewhere because they're jealous of me or they're working for somebody to un undermine me. That's all. So what would you like me to do right now? Frank and wine, I like that line, be stolen by the morning. Frank and wine is good. It has a certain charm to it. It's sort of like borders, language, and culture, like uh, the enemy within, like uh, uh, liberalism is a mental disorder, like uh, Frank and wine. There's a lot of them. It's a whole savage glossary. And I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. So everyone's against me on this. Hmm. How do you like that? Everyone's opposed. No one agrees with me. One person who was drunk called from New York agreed with me. Her and her girlfriends agreed with me. That the next, an ex-liberal local woman agreed with me. Other than that, it's such hatred. I've never seen anything like it. It's enough to make strong men change their mind and leave, you know, just disappear. I'm not going to leave, though. I, people start attacking me. I dig in and I fight back. So that's both a statement and a warning. If this keeps up, the hatred keeps up. Believe me, I know where the dirt is. I know where the skeletons lie. I know where the prescription books are. I know where the bank accounts are. I know where the front companies are. If you get the drift, the all-powerful hammer. The all-powerful hammer should be very careful because people who live in glass houses should, of all people who live in glass houses, those who use a hammer should not throw stones. That's all I could say. And the harder, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. The big, could you play Jimmy Cliff? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. This is dedicated to all of my, um, jealous competitors in the media and this goes out to you from Jimmy Cliff from years ago and I want to remind you of something else I'm not a civil servant I'm a servant of civility but if you attack me I reserve the right to fight back and if you use front men to write garbage about me well watch out because what goes around comes around this was a great song in its day by the way remember Jimmy Cliff where is he today no no I think he's still in Jamaica isn't he that was a great song in its day I play this for hours sometimes. Like a, let's move on here. What else do I have for you? Ben Franklin says that he's resigned. Oh, no, it's Senator Franklin announces his resignation. I thought it said Ben Franklin was resigning. Senator Franklin, we've done that already. I'm going to play it again now. 
All right, play it. I call I, because it's funny when I call him Frankenwine. Frankenwine is funny because he actually was crying in clip two. Let's hear it again. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. But this decision is not about me. All right, it's thanks. about people. All right. All right. Take a walk. I hear that they're creating a new television show for him called Saturday Night Dead, and he's going to be the star of it along with a few other people nobody ever watches anymore. He has no job now. He's done. What, can, what could Senator Frankenwine do after this? I suppose he could go on the lecture circuit. All of the old ladies on Prozac who uh, love liberalism, except when it comes to their pocketbook. Maybe Barbara Streisand could hire him as a, a personal assistant. That's a job for him. Wait a minute. Barbara Streisand, if you're listening to the show or you get the message, you can hire Senator Franken right now for pennies on the dollar. And I know you're a girl who likes a bargain. Think of what you could hire him for. I bet you could hire him for like 60, 70 grand a year. He can get you your lunch. He can uh, take your dog for grooming. He could turn your air conditioners on in the summer and your heat on in the winter. I mean, what? Franken would probably like a job like that. So there it is. I mean, he can take a job with her. Harvey Weinstein is available, I understand, at a fairly reasonable rate right now. You could hire probably Weinstein and Frankenwein. I'm with Frankenwein. That's interesting. We could combine the names Frank and Weinstein. It's like a combo deal. But wait till it comes around to the other side. We'll see how much they're crowing on the other side of the aisle. You know, it's so stupid to listen to this. Well, it's all the liberals. They're such phonies. They're such hypocrites. Why, they're the ones who are being pulled in right now. Yeah, right. Right. It never happened to anyone on the other side. To anyone on the other side, you're all pure as the driven snow. You're all so clean. All of the all of the pseudo mock conservatives. They're all so clean. Though no conservatives have ever done this. Are you people that stupid that you believe people buy that lie? What a crock of garbage. See, I'm a lucky guy because I'm a I'm a uh, independent. I have been from the beginning. Luckily, I never tied myself to a party because I never voted Republican in my life. Never. I never identified, I never registered as a Republican. I never liked Republicans. I never go to a party where there was a Republican. In fact, if I found myself with Republicans, I usually left right away because I didn't like men in check pants. Uh, and it's the old Groucho Marx joke. Anyone would have me as a member of their club, I wouldn't want to join. You know, that, that old joke. I don't fit in with that type. They always struck me as wrong. But the fact of the matter is, just because I backed Trump because he was a nationalist, does not mean, and hear me very clearly, that I must support everything he says and does like a slavish worshiper, because I'm not slavish and I'm not a worshiper. And I've, the way I've built my reputation over the years is by being an independent voice, by calling him as I see him. I've said that from 1994 on. So if I said to you, which I did, when he launched those missiles, do you remember last Easter what he did? Because apparently his daughter got upset over the pictures of the children in Syria. Someone showed her the fake pictures, and they said that Assad had gassed his own people. I, it was crazy. But because she got upset, we woke up one day and he launched missiles at Syrian air, 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 Syrian hangars in the middle of uh, Syria. I went ballistic on the show. Stupid, wrong mistake. You remember that or not? That that abrupt, crazy move of firing missiles and blowing up. Syrian Air Force hangars, when those planes were being used to destroy the positions of ISIS, murderers, it made no sense. And I said so. I didn't check my book to see what was correct to say. I didn't check to see what the listeners wanted to hear. I didn't do a, a poll, a push-pull poll, to see what I thought you wanted to hear. Remember what I'm here for. I'm a voice of independence. My job is to say it like I see it. Otherwise, what's the point of listening to me? If I'm going to just read you a script from the Republican playbook or the Trump playbook, you don't need me. You can get that from anybody else in the media who's on in that playbook, from the cartel. You get it from the cartel now every day. And what's odd about the cartel is they oppose them. The cartel members all opposed Trump for a year straight. Every last one of them smeared him, put him down, ridiculed you. Now they're the biggest bootlickers. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what they're angling for. I have no idea what they want out of this. They saw which way the wind blows. They put their finger up in the air. 
I don't know. I can't speak for the next man. Nor do I hope to speak for the next man. But my job is to say it like I see it and let you respond in your own way. So if you disagree with me, do so with intelligence, please. You don't have to make it, you know, slutty and filthy like it's going. Like you see the garbage on the Internet. What low lowlifes. They put up stuff you cannot believe. They won't take on the argument. Instead, they attack you personally or your family. And I take that very personally. And since I know who's doing it, because we've done an investigation of the front names in some cases, we know where they're coming from. They think they're very clever. They think that if you have a, you know, some protection in the form of the cartel, you can get away with anything. You know, but the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And sometimes cartels even fall. And they fall fast and they fall hard. Just like you never expected Franken to fall, the cartel probably feels it will not fall. Trust me. They keep playing this game. Things will be released that may not be in the interest of the cartel. I know many of you are saying, what is he talking about? Who's the cartel? Let's leave that in the air for right now. You'll figure it out one day. And when you do, you'll say, oh, my God. You're going to have an oh, my God moment when you find out what I mean by the cartel. Because I am not talking about illicit drugs. I am talking about something else. It's a cartel in the media that is unified and linked together with one agent that represents all of them, and they have all lined up to destroy me. If you think I'm making it up, you'll be very soon pleased to find out I have the proof that I'm right. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Who's going to replace Representative John Kahn here? Well, his son, of course. And uh, we don't know who his son is. We don't know where he is. We don't know what his background is. But that's the way it works, I guess, in that district. Who's going to replace Gen uh, Gen Senator Franken, Frankenwine? Uh, who will they dig up in, uh, in that state? Frankenwine will be replaced by someone else even less qualified than he is. Someone even further to the left than he is. Someone even wackier than he is. So if you think it's good news, you're mistaken. Because you're not seeing the long game here. The long game is Democrats are getting rid of people that were probably, in some ways, too moderate for the party the way it's become, <laughs> incidentally. I, I mean, you've got to understand, they're getting rid of dead wood from their point of view. They've moved so far to the left in the Democrat side. They're getting rid of pushing Conyers out, pushing uh, Frankenwine out, is part of a bigger strategy to replace them with some people to the left of them. That's my estimation of what's going to happen. We'll have to see if that happens. Let's see what else is in the news. California professor, no, no, no. Nancy Pelosi gets roasted for lying and tweet about concealed carry bill. That's a good bill where if you're qualified to carry in one state and you have a CC double, you, you can take that to another state without getting arrested. That's a great deal. That's a very big deal for those of us who understand what this means. Here's an odd story. I don't get, I don't get this. Porn star kills herself after being bullied. For refusing to shoot with man who does gay scenes, I don't call it. I don't even understand that news. I, I can't follow it. I don't know why she killed herself to begin with, and what's the bullying and the? I don't. Okay, let's forget that story. I think it's a story. Just who knows what? It, all right, chaos of Ken, line one. What's on your mind? Fire away. Thirty seconds or less. Doctor Savage, you are exactly right. It is the wrong timing, and because you have taught me to use my mind, I have figured it out. It's the taxes. They want to change the subject, which you were on, by the way, a couple days. You had guests on. We were all in. That's right. I said he's not a fiscal conservative. There's no tax savings for people filing as S-corporations. We're actually going to pay more in California and New York. Again, they ripped me to shreds. And I don't know whether they work for the White House or the, or the uh, media cartel that's trying to undermine me, but I know I was right and they're wrong. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. Go to any major bookstore in this country and show them that God exists. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.